Okay, Clyde, here's the underwater view of your backstroke. Okay, as you're pulling water, you have a nice elbow bend. So, elbows bent really well down here, down here, probably 110 degrees. Um, pulling good water, your pull is definitely sending you back this direction. Uh, one of the things we can see throughout your backstroke, and one of the things that hurts you is hips. Okay, this is the position of your hips. You're sitting down in the water a little bit. Um, we watched the backstroke video, and you can see Michael Phelps. They talked about seeing a suit. It was so high that you could see it literally just below the surface or um, very close to the surface or breaking the surface. And we can see you have about six, eight inches between your suit and the surface of the water. So you're sitting down a little bit in the water. That also has the knees bending as you're kicking, okay? So if we can lift the hips, get a little straighter position with the hips, we can get a straighter position with that leg with the kick, okay? And as you can see here, the other thing that you have, in addition to the legs cramping um, more than you would like, you can just see here, uh, you're kicking with the foot up. Should be pointing that foot down here um, when you're kicking, that's going to help you get greater power out of the ankle, out of the foot, in terms of your kick on the upbeat. Um, as we rotate through, we can see you rotate, push that hand down, and the finish of the hand is really a little bit too low. So one of the things they talked about in the backstroke video with Ryan Lochte and Michael Phelps, this is more what Michael Phelps was doing, and they were talking about it. He enters too far down below his body. So here's your suit line, here's your hand. So there's about 10 inches between your hand and your suit. Not only that, you have about two feet from the surface of the water to your hand. That means that your hand's gonna take all that time after you finish your stroke to raise up two feet. If your shoulder rotation's happening more in the right position and your hand's finishing in the right position, that hand's going to be about six inches under the water. It's going to get out of the water quicker, and that's going to help you get rotated a lot faster to the other side on your stroke, on your backstroke. You can see here, as you're entering with this hand, this hand's entering here, and your shoulders are flat. What should be happening is your right shoulder should be up here, your arm should be finishing here, and your left shoulder should be down here. So that hand is going to enter a little bit better, and you're going to be on your left side already. Okay, and then we advance it, and again, kind of came in with the back of the hand and then rotated to pinky first as the shoulder started to break the surface. So if that happens earlier, it's going to help that hand enter pinky first, and you'll get a little bit more out of the pull on that side. Now once you're in the water, again, this is a little bit flatter hand, but then you get that elbow bend, and you get a nice pull. So you're doing a good job with the hands and the pulling. Um, again, you can see the kick. Knee bend is really high, okay? Foot is not pointed, it's angled up. Same thing here, angled up with the toe up. Should be straighter with the toes out here, not angled toward the ceiling. Um, but again, too much knee bend. A lot of that just starts with the hips. As you're coming through here, you sh your hips should be on this line. Your legs should be up on that line and you can see you're quite a bit below that, really sitting down with the hips. So if we can lift those hips and get that shoulder roll right, that's going to help you. It's going to reduce the drag. It's going to help you kick right and get a little faster with your backstroke. Um, but you can just see in all strokes you want to ride really high with your hips, and you're riding really low with your hips and your backstroke. Again, here you can see your hand, right hand's entering the water, but you're not on that side. You're flat. So sitting down with those hips again, and now you get on the side. So you're just a little bit late to get to that side. Once you get to that side, you can see how high the hips are. Okay, now you got to the side, now your hips are up here. And that's where we want them to be the whole time. Even when you're rotating through, the hips need to be up, not sitting down. Um, you can just see right here when you're finishing a stroke, the hips are sitting down. Kicks just way too much knee bend. Uh, but it all starts with the hips. If the hips get up, I think it'll straighten out your legs quite a bit. Again, weight getting on to your stomach. We can see in this part of the video, 
here's your top hip, here's your bottom hip. You're not on your stomach, you're on your side. So you're late getting that rotation. I want to see both hips on the same line, on the same plane, and you're on your stomach already, so you're not reaching in here on your side to the wall. You're slowing down as you're doing that rather than speeding up. You should be speeding up. You should be on your stomach taking it on like you do your freestyle turns. And I notice a noticeable difference between your freestyle feet and hips coming over and your backstroke. Hips are much slower on your backstroke. And then we can see here, look where your eyes are. They're looking straight at the wall, okay? Eyes should be, head should be here. You should be looking down at the bottom to initiate the turn, not looking at the wall. So that's going to slow you down. It's going to create less of a tuck and more of a, you know, your body's going to be outside the tuck as you go to flip. Okay, use your hands to pull over on the turn. That's good. Could be tighter with that tuck, but that's, again, getting the head down. We can see as you go to push off, your feet should be up here. Okay, so even though your angle's right, the foot should be this way and this way, but it should be up higher. Your feet are here and here. They're down lower on the wall. So as you're pushing off, your chest is actually high. It's way up here, and it should be down below the feet. So if they're act, your chest is actually above the feet. Your line is straight. We should be angled down more. So down in this angle. Your whole body should be on that line right there as you go to push off the wall. But that's getting tighter with the tuck, getting the feet higher on the wall as you go to push off. That's going to get your a deeper push off into that dolphin kick. And then as you push off, good streamline. So I like that part. Um, would like to see your legs not start kicking just yet. Okay. Your feet um, should be... Sorry about that. That's not a good line. Your feet should be here. Okay. If I can get off this page, I will show you what I'm talking about. But you can just see how your line is back here. Okay. Legs are here. Arms are here. So you're bowing that belly up. And we want to push off and hold that line. So you should be on a straight line. So your feet should be about a foot and a half higher as you're pushing off and riding that push off. You're strong, you're doing this and it's creating drag as you're trying to push off the wall. And then as you come off the wall, you can see that those hips are so high, they should be down in, in terms of, uh, in that line of the body. So then that causes, you know, your knees to be really up high on your kick out. So your knees were here and your body's down here. So it's not as much a core, it's, you're driving your kick from the knee down instead of from your core. And then as we bleed out a little bit more, just see, you can just a little bit better. Um, again, really kind of overbending the body and the knees here. And then you need to see your feet are facing up. They should be facing pointed at that point. Coming up in your first stroke, there's your breakout stroke, a little bit low. You want to be closer to the surface as you break out on that stroke. Had to pause a little bit to wait for yourself to get out of the water to start that pull. Good vision here, shoulder down, good bend of the elbow, hands in a good position, really pulling water. So you, you pull a lot of water with your hands. Very good um, job of getting your hands in position to really catch water. No bubbles on your hands. Um, so you're really pulling that water straight back and pushing yourself straight forward. So that's working really well. This is a problem though. Kicking with your knee that high and the foot's going to turn out. And then you're finished with the other foot's here. Again, get the hips up. This will be a lot straighter. Your feet will be a lot straighter and you'll get more out of your kick. Um, that's probably your, weak, you know, your weakest point is your kick. Shoulder roll needs to happen a little bit earlier, but um, and then to finish your hands just low again. You can see it. Here's your shoulder. Here's your hand. Would like to see this here, just below the hip, not a foot and a half below the hip, because um, that's pushing you up. When you finish here, you're actually your energy is going there. Okay. Finish closer to the hip, and you're going to be pushing back, so you're going to be pushing yourself forward more. And 
just can see how low your hips are. That's just the hard part with this. Your freestyle, your hips are nice and high. Your backstroke, your hips are really low. Here's your chest, here's your hips. You want your hips up here. And that will help your kick and help help you get a lot more drive and not so much drag in your backstroke. Um, but the pole is doing a lot of the work and, and kicks in a bad position because your hips are so low.